You stand in front of a guy and you just want to let him have it. Quentin Tarantino dunked all over Bruce Lee's legacy in his movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And when Bruce Lee fans let him know how they felt about it, his response was, Go oh, suck a dick. <laughs> Now, Tarantino could have apologized. He could have explained how he's created this fictional universe where his version of Bruce Lee existed, but instead he decided to go on the Joe Rogan experience and do a bunch of interviews where he tried to present his version of Bruce Lee as fact. And do you know why he did it? It's because Quentin Tarantino has a bizarre hatred for Bruce Lee. What's up, y'all? My name is Prince, and this is Golden Bell Training. We're going to set the record straight on why Quentin Tarantino has it out for Bruce Lee, because, well, after posting my response to Tarantino's comments on the Joe Rogan experience, I found out a lot of new information that warranted another video to continue the conversation. Hey, so first off, hey, man, shout out to the Kung Fu Genius, because it was something that Alex said on his video podcast that made me pull at the strings to help me uncover just how much Tarantino wanted to prove why he feels that Bruce Lee was overrated. Hey, and if you really like learning stuff about Bruce Lee from somebody who knows what they're talking about, hey man, be sure to check out his podcast or catch them here on YouTube. I find myself learning stuff over there all the time. But anyway, let's start with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and then we're going to work our way through all of this mess. So let's recall that we revisited this conversation about Bruce Lee and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood while Quentin Tarantino was doing the press tour for the book by the same name, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Now, look, this is a big deal because, like usual, the book is way more detailed than the movie. Now, in the book, we learn that Cliff Booth actually is this stone cold killer who served in some special forces unit in the Korean War. He really did kill his wife with a harpoon gun. It was an accident, but he laughed about it and he wouldn't think twice about putting someone down if he's given the chance in a fight. He's not the laid back tough guy that Brad Pitt played in the movie, but he's more like a bit of a psychopath who can take a life without blinking twice. Now, the crazy thing is that Cliff Booth is also supposed to be this big film buff. Now, I read from people who reviewed the book and they said that Cliff Booth in the book has a lot of the same interests as Quentin Tarantino. So where we were led to believe that this Cliff Booth character was loosely based on the real life stuntman, Hal Needham, it's more like Tarantino imagined himself as a more badass version of Hal Needham when he created the Cliff Booth character for this movie and the book. So when you see Cliff Booth slamming Bruce Lee into a car door and fighting him to a draw, it's not supposed to be based on some alleged fight that happened on the set of the Green Hornet between Bruce Lee and Judo Jean LaBelle. It's Quentin Tarantino saying that this imaginary version of himself can kick Bruce Lee's butt. So Cliff Booth is this make-believe version of Quentin Tarantino who can kick Bruce Lee's butt. And I mean, you might be asking, so what's the big deal? Well, see, the big deal is that Quentin Tarantino planned for it to be more than Bruce Lee getting slammed into a car and then Bruce and Cliff fight into a draw. See, in the book, Tarantino wrote that during the fight, Cliff is trying his best not to kill Bruce Lee. And actually, in the original version of the fight that was in the first version of the script, Bruce was supposed to nearly get beaten to death. It was going to be clear that Cliff was the superior fighter. And the reason that that version of the fight was not in the movie was actually because of Brad Pitt. See, Brad Pitt was very close friends with Bruce's son, Brandon Lee. I think I read somewhere that they actually hung out together right before Brandon left to go work on The Crow. So given the fact that Bruce was going to be nearly beaten to death, I mean, there's no way that this fight was loosely inspired by some fight that happened between Judo Jean LaBelle and Bruce Lee on the set of The Green Hornet. I mean, I've read several accounts that Judo Jean LaBelle used to roughhouse a lot on the set with people that he liked. And I'm sure that Bruce probably did get pinned or choked out while they were messing around. But it wasn't because Bruce was on the set tagging stunt people or disrespecting them like Tarantino said in his interviews. I mean, think about Tarantino's source for all of that stuff that he claimed about Bruce Lee that happened on the set of The Green Hornet. He said that Matthew Polly wrote it in his book, Bruce Lee, A Life. And the thing is, 
Matthew Polly called out Tarantino twice for being wrong about that. And like, well, the stuntman hated Bruce. Really? On on uh, on on uh, uh, Green Hornet. No, it's in the it's in Matthew Polly's book. And before that, I, it's always been known. And Bruce Lee could be an asshole, but he was never an asshole to the little people on set, the stunt people, the people below him. He was always a jerk to the producers or the directors or the people who were above him trying to tell him what to do. It's not in the book. Matthew Polly never said those, never said any of that stuff. So, I mean, if you really look at the situation, it starts to become obvious that Quentin Tarantino is trying to twist reality to fit this false narrative that he's created about Bruce Lee. He could have just come out and said, look, this is a situation that I created because, look, y'all, I just don't like Bruce Lee. I think he's overrated and he needs to be knocked down a few pegs. But instead, he's trying to convince people that this version of Bruce Lee and his movie is the historically accurate version. And I mean, now it's hard for some people who liked seeing Bruce Lee be humiliated and once upon a time in Hollywood to believe that Tarantino doesn't have it out for Bruce Lee because, well, they feel that Kill Bill was a bit of an homage to Bruce Lee. And at the same time, some Bruce Lee fans were shocked at the Mike Moe Bruce Lee character because they thought that Tarantino was a huge Bruce Lee fan, the way that he included what we thought was an homage to Bruce Lee in Kill Bill. And the thing is, though, the Kill Bill was not an homage to Bruce Lee, not June Fon Bruce Lee, at least. Surprised? <laughs> See, it's easy to think it is because you have the crazy 88s rocking the Kato mask fighting Beatrix Kiddo, who's rocking the iconic Game of Death sweatsuit. Beatrix Kiddo is mowing down old Randy Shee's gang, and I mean, it's all cool, right? Well, I mean, take a second to think about the deeper meaning of what we're seeing here. And hey, y'all, this is about to be heavy, so you might want to buckle up for this one because I'm getting ready to take y'all there. Look, y'all, we've got this scene making a statement that Game of Death Bruce Lee can beat Green Hornet Bruce Lee. And that's what Tarantino's saying in that scene. Not only that Game of Death Bruce Lee is better than Kato, but that Kato is not even in the Game of Death Bruce Lee's league, just like how the Crazy 88s couldn't hang with Beatrix Kiddo at all. Now, the thing is, no one has really tried to play Bruce Lee's Kato. There have been other Kato-inspired characters in The Black Mask, and you had Jay Cho playing Kato, but, I mean, he wasn't trying to be Bruce Lee playing Kato, and that's significant because other people have played Bruce Lee's character in the game of death. I mean, even in the actual game of death movie, you had two other guys playing Bruce Lee and all but the 11 minutes of the footage that Bruce Lee actually shot before he passed. And that's in the actual theatrical release. We're not talking about the real game of death that that's actually good. That was in that documentary. But anyway, so what Tarantino is saying is that these Bruce Lee imposters, they can beat Bruce Lee. These other guys who did all these Bruce exploitation Game of Death movies, or at least rocked that yellow jumpsuit, they were better than the real Bruce Lee. And why is that? <laughs> it's because Quentin Tarantino has this weird hatred for Bruce Lee, and he felt that Bruce Lee was overrated. Look, Kill Bill was not an homage to Bruce Lee. It was a statement that the Bruce Lee clones were better than the real Bruce Lee. And I know that sounds crazy, like you might be thinking that I'm putting together some crazy conspiracy theory, right? I mean, I'm sure some people are going to say, hey, man, here's this Bruce Lee fanboy. He's still crying about Quentin Tarantino and how he's part of some conspiracy to ruin the legacy of Bruce Lee. And I mean, well, no, Bruce Lee historian is not the same thing as a Bruce Lee fanboy. Bruce Lee fanboying. That's what Beardy and the Bruce Lee Real Fight Channel do. There's a big difference. A Bruce Lee historian looks into things and tries to find the truth. And here's the truth. Quentin Tarantino said that Bruce Lee was overrated. Quentin Tarantino said that the Bruce Bloitation era guys were better than Bruce Lee. And I mean, how can an imitation be better than the original? I mean, you know why people don't feel like Kobe Bryant is the GOAT? Well, it's because they feel like he was an imitation of Michael Jordan. And when has an imitation ever been better than the original? 
And I'm sure if you think hard enough, you might think of an example where the imitation actually is better than the original. But in the case of Bruce Lee, I mean, are you serious? What Bruce exploitation actor is better than Bruce Lee? Well, I mean, according to Quentin Tarantino, he prefers Ho Chung Tao, the Taiwanese stuntman known on screen as Bruce Lee. That's L.I. Lee. Some people call him Bruce Lai. Look, y'all, according to Tarantino, the whole Bruce exploitation era was better than the movies actually starring Bruce Lee, the guy that they're attempting to impersonate. But in the case of Bruce Lai, he was better than Bruce Lee in every way possible. And I'm not making this up. Tarantino has been pretty vocal about his opinion that Bruce Lai was better than the little dragon Bruce Lee. Tarantino wrote in his blog that in the period after Bruce Lee passed, before the emergence of Jackie Chan in the 80s, that Bruce Lai was the only kung fu movie actor who was able to put a dent in the American box office. Over half of the martial arts film released in that period that received any kind of support in the media starred Bruce Lai. Tarantino goes on to say that along with Sonny Chiba, Bruce Lai was his favorite Kung Fu actor growing up. He liked him more than Bruce Lee. For one, he'd seen more of Bruce Lai's movies than Jung Fan Bruce Lee, but he also felt that he was a better actor than the real Bruce Lee. So if you hear Tarantino talk about his admiration for Bruce Lee, you have to ask yourself, is he talking about Bruce Lee, the dragon, Lee Jun Fan? Or is he talking about the Bruce exploitation Bruce Lee played by Ho Chung Tao? I mean, Ho Chung Tao is my favorite of the Bruce exploitation actors and also feel that he is the best of them. Out of all of them, I've seen more of his movies than anyone else. But you want me to say that he's better than Bruce Lee? <laughs> Come on, son. <laughs> Ain't gonna happen. So when you look at how Tarantino was tarnishing the image of Bruce Lee, and I'm not talking about the movie starring Ho Chung Tao, I mean Bruce's legacy. Think about it. Just like I said in the last video about how Tarantino used Bruce Lee to put his guy, Cliff Booth, over as the hero. He's also doing all of this to put his guy over as a superior version of the man that Bruce Lee is attempting to imitate. So in Tarantino's self-created universe, Bruce Lee was this cocky show off who's completely overrated. And after he dies, this other guy comes along who has a career playing Bruce Lee. And not only is he better than everything, but I guess he's supposed to also be a better person. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I mean, that's pretty weird to me. I don't know why Tarantino would go so far with his hatred for Bruce Lee. But I mean, I'm not really trying to understand that guy. I can just say this. I think Bruce Lee was an interesting dude. I don't agree with everything that he said. That might surprise some of y'all. I don't agree with everything that he did. I also am a fan of Ho Chung Tao, the guy who made a career out of pretending to be Bruce Lee. And as a kid, I had seen more of his movies than the actual Bruce Lee. And up until I got into college, I actually thought that he really was Bruce Lee. And I mean, that's kind of what started me on this path of becoming a Bruce Lee historian, because I wanted to know the difference between Bruce Lee and the Bruce exploitation era guys. And I wish Quentin Tarantino would maybe take the time to learn to appreciate Bruce and his pretenders. But I mean, that's on him. I'm on my own journey. So if you didn't catch what I said about Quentin Tarantino in the last video, hey, be sure to check out that video where I explained why he was wrong about the stuff he said in his interview with Joe Rogan. And if you're interested in learning some things that maybe you didn't know about Bruce Lee, you can start here with how Bruce Lee was running in a gang before he came to America to become the Bruce Lee that we all know. But hey, y'all keep training. Remember to breathe. And I'll see you on the next video.